Let me take you someplace special. I'm leaving you in charge. We're good. Rest easy, lovebird. Maybe I was sleepwalking? Huh? It happens when you suppress your powers. I can't trust myself. Let's try this. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Flash Season 6 Episode 5 trailer video. I'll address the Easter eggs and the Crisis on Infinite Earth scenes from Episode 4 and also all the Green Lantern stuff. I have a new Green Lantern theory about Crisis on Infinite Earth based on all the news of the new Green Lantern stuff that they're working on. We'll do a giveaway for either Green Lantern core rings or Flash rings. Either one. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your best Green Lantern core theory for the Arrowverse on the video. Just addressing the footage and the Easter eggs, then I'll talk about Green Lantern stuff. Even though the Cisco promo is black and white, I'm not positive whether or not next week's episode is going to be full black and white because it seems like Barry and Iris are going on vacation. So Cisco is in charge, but he's having all these weird hallucinations because he's suppressing his powers, as Breacher says. So the man Danny Trejo is back. I always love it when Danny Trejo is around. They've been using him for so much comedy in previous seasons, though. But that was meant to be more comedic season, and they're a little bit more serious because of all the crisis stuff this year. You see him jump at Cisco a couple times trying to scare him. Maybe he's trying to force him to use his powers. Everybody saw Cisco wearing his vibe costume in the flash forward to the crisis scenes during episode two. So I felt like it was only going to be a matter of time before he either got his powers back or he found a way around that so that he could still do superhero stuff during the big crossover episodes. But the big crisis scenes from last week's episode, Nash Wells needed a special crypto circuit for what we actually found out was trying to track the path of the monitor. Oh, this is where you've been hiding. So he's actually looking for the Eternium, which I think is also tied to the Iris West secretly being from the future storyline, which is a big deep cut for the Flash comic books. I'll talk about that in a second, too. He's meant to be this intergalactic debunker of god myth themes, so it sounds like he's meddling in affairs, pariah style, if you're a big comic book Crisis on Infinite Earths fan, and him busting into this space where the Monitor has been either keeping things or one of his special sanctums is going to push him on the path to becoming the comic book pariah, the person in the very pariah-looking costume during the crossover scenes they were filming on the Wave Rider. There was no confirmation that that was going to be Nash Wells because we haven't heard him speak. It's just a picture, so you just have to imagine which version of Harrison Wells that's going to be. Back when they announced Crisis, they said that he would be playing Pariah, but he'd also be a new version of Wells, and he'd be coming back as Reverse Flash for the crossover. So at the time, I assumed that that meant he was playing three different versions of the character, but if Nash Wells becomes Pariah, that would make a little more sense, and he'd just be playing two different characters. It wouldn't get that crazy. The whole idea of a pariah being an outsider, someone who's unwelcome, also ties in with what he said about the Council of Wells. Like when Cisco referenced it, he said, oh, those jackasses, like he doesn't want to have anything to do with the other versions of himself. The version of that character in the comics was turned into pariah, sort of got his powers or was cursed with his powers to serve the monitor after he meddled in affairs that alerted the anti-monitor to the presence of the positive matter universe setting off comic book Crisis on Infinite Earths. So he was the one that was to blame for all the deaths and destruction of the universes. The whole thing with Iris West secretly being from the future in the comics is just sort of way to bring her back because Reverse Flash in the classic Silver Age comics killed her at a costume party while she's dressed up like Batgirl. Later they wanted to bring the character back so they said that she was secretly from the 30th century and her parents, the real parents from the 30th century, sent her backwards in time so that she would be safe there. After Reverse Flash wound up killing her, they took her life force and put her consciousness inside a new body reuniting Barry and Iris in the future 
but they only had a month together before 1985 in real life in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comics happened where they really did kill off the Flash. The TV show will probably have a different way of explaining why she was from the future and why she was sent back into the past and why everyone thinks that she's Joe's daughter when really she might be the daughter of someone in the 30th century. Most of this past week's episode was dedicated to just Barry getting Cisco ready to being team leader when he's gone, assuming that he's gone. Obviously, we don't think The Flash is going to die because the show is going to continue in the back half of the season and they're still calling it The Flash. So it's kind of a moot point, but I did like when Cisco dropped that little teaser, can this serum protect someone from antimatter? And Nash Wells says, obviously, yes, it totally can. They also dropped a deep cut Easter egg for the Dominators during the invasion crossover from a couple years ago, because apparently McCullough Tech, which is an Easter egg for Mirror Master, went to the Dominators homeworld to steal that serum. If you didn't see the Arrow episode this week, they also referenced a lot of Monitor and Anti-Monitor stuff. They're sort of setting up the concept of the Anti-Monitor because the Monitor, Marno Vu, has not told them about his counterpart from the Antimatter universe. There was a book that belonged to an ancient member of the League of Assassins that was kept in a tomb. They did a big riff on the season three midseason finale when Oliver was killed or seemingly killed by Ra's al Ghul and then kicked off the mountaintop. So the whole episode was made to reference that episode. They brought Thea back and then the person that wrote the book chronicled that the Monitor was worried that he would be the one to bring the destruction, the crisis on infinite Earths. So Oliver is going into this thinking that the Monitor might turn on them, but based on the look of him inside this book, it looks more like the Anti-Monitor. The Monitor also brought future Team Arrow, Mia and all the future people into present day in the Arrow cave with Oliver because we'd seen pictures of them behind the scenes during the crossover, so we knew that she was going to participate in Crisis on Infinite Earths, so she would be on screen with Oliver, and it was just a matter of which sci-fi twist they would use to explain how they accomplished that. Obviously, it would be a version of time travel, but the Monitor basically snapped his fingers and brought them together. Oliver? What's going on? That's a very good question. Getting into the Green Lantern stuff. So new theory about Green Lantern during Crisis on Infinite Earths. Everybody wants Green Lantern in the Arrowverse somewhere, but they just announced that Greg Berlanti of the Berlantiverse, of course, is doing a new Green Lantern series on HBO Max. And they're trying to tie all the disparate shows together using Crisis on Infinite Earths. They've got Black Lightning crossing over. Previously, they said that that wasn't connected to the Arrowverse, but it's definitely going to be connected now. There's rumors that they're also trying to tie the Titans universe on the DC streaming service to the Arrowverse using Crisis as well. They've been teasing Diggle Green Lantern Easter eggs for several seasons on Arrow now. Everyone at FanCast him is Jon Stewart of the Arrowverse, and recently they actually canonized the idea that his real name is Stewart. So he has a stepfather named General Stewart that married his mother, so technically John Diggle's real name is John Diggle Stewart. Now during Crisis on Infinite Earths, they've been filming, we saw a big battle scene. It clearly looks like his Spartan costume has very large green highlights on it that it did not have before. Even if he doesn't actually wear a Green Lantern Corps ring during the crossover, the shows will probably reference Green Lantern Corps in some way. I don't expect them to actually have Hal Jordan or another really big Green Lantern comic book character like Jon Stewart in the crossover, but just the idea that the Green Lantern Corps exists and is currently active. Then they'll save the task of introducing those Green Lantern characters like Hal Jordan and the other big ones during the actual Green Lantern series when it premieres on HBO Max in a couple years. I will do a separate video about the Green Lantern series tomorrow because there's so many Ryan Reynolds jokes that we could make about this, but it also means that they're probably not going to do the Green Lantern reboot movie that they had talked about before. A lot of you have been wondering how they're going to top Crisis on Infinite Earths with the crossover next year. Well, they could use it as a big Green Lantern Corps introduction, and then they debut on their TV show. Because I don't think that's going to premiere till 2021, and typically they use the crossovers to introduce really, really big comic book characters. So everybody, let me know in the comments, what do you think they're going to do with Green Lantern stuff during Crisis on Infinite Earths? I'll name a giveaway winner when I post that new Green Lantern video tomorrow, but everyone click here to learn about the big Avengers 5 announcement in Young Avengers and click here for the teaser for the brand new Game of Thrones prequel series. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.